Here it is, everybody. And are you lucky to be in on it? It's the land of the lost with the most sensational prizes for lucky winners ever heard of in radio. Listen carefully to the end of the program to hear how you can win a barrel of money and more than 300 other prizes. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Land of the Lost. And its discoverer, the well-known storyteller, Isabel Manning Houston. Can you imagine the thrill of discovering an enchanted kingdom at the bottom of the sea, where all lost things go? That's what my brother Billy and I did. We're the only Earth people who've ever been allowed to enter the land of the lost. It all came about because we saved the life of Red Lantern, the wisest fish in the ocean. In return, he allowed us to visit that wonderful realm again and again. To reach the land of the lost, you must travel down on a fast ocean current and pass through a magic curtain of seaweed that guards the entrance. Once inside, it's like being at the heart of an emerald, where a shimmering green light plays over everything. Back water there, Billy. We're leaving Isabel behind. Oh, I was just looking at this beautiful seashell, Red Lantern, the big rose-colored one. <laughs> I wish I could take it home with me. Ah, ah, ah. Fins off, Tadpole. Don't forget you're not allowed to take anything out of the land of the lost. Not even a seashell, Red Lantern? Not even a... Why, well, how would you like it if someone barged into your house and helped himself to a vase from your mantelpiece? Oh, but that's different. A, a vase is an... Well, an ornament. And the seashells are the ocean's ornaments, Isabel. You know what I've always wondered, Red Lantern? Why is it that when you hold a shell over your ear, you can always hear the ocean? Rock my rudder, Billy. Any minnow can tell you that. The sea nymphs put the sound into shells, of course. The sea nymphs do? But how? Well, I, I don't like to give out all the particulars. There's a little magic mixed up in it. Magic? Uh, want to trickle over and watch them at work? Gosh, can we? You bet your barnacles. The murmurarium is only three flips and a flop from here. The, the murmurarium? Where the shells are uh, treated for sound, Isabel. This way. <laughs> named Sandra will be there, the beautiful one who saved us from old Proteus that time. Search me. Hey, where's that singing coming from? From the place we're going to, Small Fry, that big cave just ahead. A cave? Uh -huh. Is that what the murmurarium is? Uh, caves have the best echoes, Isabel, and you've never seen one that looks like this inside. Sandra. And dear 
red lantern? The top of the tide to all you sea nymphs. But, but as I live and twinkle, uh, isn't one of you missing? Alas, yes, red lantern. It's Flavia who's gone. Flavia? The most timid of us all. And one of the loveliest. With amber eyes and honey-colored hair. Oh my golly, what happened to her? If we only knew, Billy. There was a dreadful storm a month ago that caught us all up on the surface. We dove for safety. But Flavia never came down to join us. Great, Atlantic and Pacific. You, you mean she disappeared? We searched everywhere for her red lantern after the tempest was over. And there wasn't a sign. I fear it's no use hoping any longer. Oh, but we mustn't burden you with our troubles. Tell me, what brings you to this corner of the ocean? Uh, Billy and Isabel want to see how you get the sound of the sea into the seashells. Oh, that. Well, to begin with, this cave is called the Mermarium because it captures and holds even the slightest murmur of the wave so perfectly. Be silent, and you can hear for yourself. to those who love the sea. That's why we put its sound into every shell, so that people who miss the green water may carry its voice with them, no matter how far inland they go. But how? Come this way, children. For weeks, my sisters and I have been gathering shells. We have piled them in the innermost part of the murmurarium, the echo chamber. Do you see the great piles of seashells back there? Oh, yes. White ones. And topaz color. And green. And lavender. They have lain there for seven days, absorbing the wave sounds. Wave sounds? Certainly. The opposite of sound waves, you know. Huh? By now, any of these shells will give back the same murmur you hear around you. Just try one. Okay. Say, you're right, Sandra. You can hear it plain as plain. Well... Now you know how it's done, Pollywogs. But I don't see anything exactly magic about it. Ha-ha. <laughs> its secret belongs to the sea nymphs alone, Billy. Oh, then we'll never find out. A... What's that? The bell that warns us when a stranger is approaching. All hail, sea nymphs. Will you admit a friendly sea prince to the murmurarium? Enter, sir. And welcome. You are most kind. Hey, Isabel, Red Lantern. We know that guy. Uh, it's Rodolfo the Dolphin, the one that rules over the Sapphire Strait. The kingdom where everything is blue. Why, by all that's indigo. Friends, old friends. You know Red Lantern and the Earth Children. Know them. If it hadn't been for their help, I should still be the lost dolphin. And the Sapphire Straits would mourn me as dead. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you're looking very much alive, Rudolfo. I'll say. What are you doing here? Something very strange has brought me to seek out the sea nymphs, Billy. Strange, Your Highness? Something they tell me only you can explain. Do you see this fluted seashell? Yes. A few days ago, I found it lying outside the gates of my palace. I noticed it because instead of being blue, like everything else in Sapphire Straits... It was pure, pearly white. Uh, that means it hadn't been there long, doesn't it, Rodolfo? Exactly, or our waters would have tinted it. Well, as I was idly examining it, the thing happened. Mercy, what thing, Prince Rodolfo? The shell spoke to me. Ooh, oh, spoke to you? Uh, now, look here, Rodolfo. It's true, Red Lantern. There's a voice in that shell, and I have fallen in love with it. Oh, but that's impossible. No one but a sea nymph knows how to put sounds into a seashell. And we never spoke into any. But I tell you, someone did. Someone with a voice that makes my heart turn over each time I hear it. Listen for yourselves if you don't believe me. After you, Isabella. Put the shell to your ear. Oh, thank you. I... Well, what about it? Hear anything? Why, why yes. There is a voice. Huh? A lady's voice. Very faint and far away. Well, I'll be waterlogged. Uh, what did it say? I, I'm not sure. I can only understand the word help. I, too, 
Oh, I shall go mad if I can't find out. Give me the shell, Isabel. Perhaps if I hold it here against the side of the cave, our wall of pearl will act as a sounding board and magnify the voice. Quiet all. <laughs> You see? Thank Neptune she's alive, Sandra. Or she was alive when she spoke into that shell. Yes. Anything might have happened since then. Oh, dear. It's all so strange and frightening. Why should Flavia stay on an island when the sea is her home? Never mind that. Where is this island of Lone, Red Lantern? It's a long way from here. A mere speck on the sea. Uh, in the vicinity of the doldrums. Ah, south, southeast. Then I bid you farewell. Prince Dalton. Where are you going? To answer the call from the voice I love. You mean you're going to try to rescue Flavia? What else? Who then wait for us? Yeah, not so fast there. Hurry, Isabel. You? You're coming too? You'll help me? You and Red Lantern? We'll do our wetmost, Rodolfo. So take your bearings and set your course toward the horrid, torrid zone. We're off to rescue a maiden fair from the desolate island of Lone. Gee, but Rudolfo's a fast swimmer. Uh, uh, better slow down, Rudolfo, and do a little preliminary scouting on the surface. You mean on account of the warning in the seashell? Yes. Come on. Up we go, everybody. <laughs> That's the spigot. Now, cast your eyes around. If my navigating was any good... It uh... sure was, Red Lantern. Look, there's an island. Just a small one, like you said. And there's someone on it. A nymph. A sea nymph. It must be Flavia. What's she doing, anyway? See how she's bending down and weaving her hands back and forth over something? It's, it's a pile of shells, Billy. She must be making sea nymphs magic. Now she's picking one of them up. Uh, and singing into it. Hark. Father Neptune, hear my cry. Will you leave me here to die? Oh, let this message in a shell reach someone who loves me well. Someone who will dare to brave the menace hidden in the way. Oh, listen to my anguished plea and send a friend to rescue me. Oh, send a friend She's throwing the shell in the ocean. Poor frightened creature. I'm not going to wait any... Stop. Stay where you are, all of you. What's the matter, Red Lantern? Look. That moving shadow in the water between us and the island. Where? Where? To the left, Billy. It's gone now. But there comes another. Oh! Oh, Red Lantern. It's a horrible, great, gray creature swimming underwater. (gasps) With long pointed teeth that stick out in front. Great gobs of seaweed. It, it's a tuscong. A t- tuscong? One of those fearful sea beasts that even the sharks are terrified of. But I thought tuscongs were extinct, Red Lantern. They're, they're seldom seen. Only three of them are left alive. But two of them are right here. And there's the third. Oh, Billy! <laughs> 
stone sink before you scuttled, Isabel. They haven't spotted us yet, luckily. No, they they seem to be swimming around and around the island. Of course. Now I get it. They're what Flavia was talking about when she said, Beware the things that swim in rings. You're right, Billy. And they're the menace hidden in the waves that we heard her sing about just now. Uh, I'm afraid we're up against it, my friends. There's only one thing we can do, Red Lantern. Eh? And what's that, Rudolfo? Create a diversion. Huh? If one of us attracts the Tuscan's attention and draws them away from the island, Flavia can return to the water and make her escape with the rest of our party. Yeah, but, but what's going to become of the fellow that creates the diversion? You needn't worry about it, Billy. I'll take care of the diversion end. But, Rodolfo, that's madness. A dolphin is no match for one of those Tuscans. Not in a fin-to-fin fight, Red Lantern. But a chase is different. I'll match my speed with anything that swims. Uh, you haven't seen these monsters when they're really moving. But don't you understand? Whatever happens to me, it's a chance to save the nymph I love. Spoken like the prince you are, Rudolfo. We'll do our part, won't we, Pollywogs? I'm counting on the three of you. It'll be up to you to get Flavia off the island and back to safety. We will, Rudolfo. We promise. Very well, then. I'll, I'll wait over there, to the left, to the Tuscan, come in fight again. But hurry, Rudolfo. And good luck. Oh, gosh, he's Head a... low, tadpoles. Just keep your eyes above water. We mustn't give ourselves away or... There it comes again, around the end of the island. First Tuscan. And, and there's the second one. Holy smoke, why does Rudolfo... Shh, shh. He's waiting until all three are in sight. Now, quiet. Don't move until... Look, they hear him, but they don't see him. Big Dogley House, this way! You're fluffier than sea elephants! They've seen him now! They're after him! There they go! Yo! Slow up and see down! Now's our chance. Strike out for the shore, kid. Flavia! Ahoy there, Flavia! Quick, Flavia, into the water. We're here to help you escape. Oh, oh thank heaven. Friend, Red Lantern. Oh, but what? How? Don't ask questions now. We've got to swim for our lives. Oh, my gosh. We can't leave Rudolfo like this. Look, out there, the Tuscans are gaining on him. Oh, Rudolfo? Yes, he's the guy Remember that... our promise, Billy. To get Flavia safely away from these dangerous waters with no delay. That's why Rudolfo is risking his life. We must do what he asked. Okay, Red Lantern. Submerge, everyone, and follow me as fast as you can back to the land of the lost and the Murmurarium. Oh, Flavia, dear, what a hideous time you must have had with those monsters swimming round and round. (laughs) It was dreadful, sisters. Oh, but it's all over now. You're safe with us again. All over? All over when brave Prince Rudolfo may be. Maybe. No, no, my dear. Never say lost. Rudolfo may turn up yet. He was giving those Tuscongs a real run for their money. Yeah, but he couldn't have held out this long, Red Lantern. Why, we've been back here for hours. Oh, Billy. It's true, Isabel. Billy is right. Oh, how can I bear it when I love him so? I would have risked my life for his. You love Prince Rudolfo? You are a shy little Flavia. How can you, when you don't even know him? But I... I do know him. That is, we've never met, but I've seen him often from a distance as we passed through the sapphire tree. And I've dreamed about him ever since. Oh, my poor little sister. Hold on. What's that? It does indeed. Come outside and see everybody. It's Madeline, all right. There she blubbers. Oh, Billy. Red Lantern. Isabel. Wasn't it perfectly awful? What do you mean, Madeline? I saw the whole thing from a distance, my dear. But really. Oh, that's the little nymph you 
rescued, isn't it? <laughs> A sweet thing. <laughs> oh, stop spouting, Madeline. What's this all about? Well, you ought to know, Red Lantern. I thought you'd want to hear about that poor, uh, brave dolphin. Oh, yes, yes, please tell us. What happened? Oh, it was magnificent. The way he kept ahead of those Tuscongs. I followed him for hours. Simply hours. Till I saw he was weakening. Oh, oh Madeline, what did you do? Do? Why, I couldn't bear to watch it any longer. So I... Good grief, she's choking. No, 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 no. Just opening my throat. One moment. <laughs> Fish to Columbus. Uh, it's as big as the echo chamber. Oh, oh, oh. Is it safe to come out? Rodolfo, that's Rodolfo's voice. And there he is, coming out of Madeline's uh, back parlor. <laughs> Billy, she saved me. Madeline saved me. You mean? Just when I thought everything was over, I heard a great whoosh in the water. And there she was beside me. <laughs> My baby, those Tuscons were just simply furious when I carried him off. Neat as you please in my sea emergency compartment. Oh, <laughs> Madeline, I'll always be grateful to you. Now I can thank Prince Rudolfo for all he did for me. And I can beg you to do something for me, fairest of sea nymphs. Yes? To share my throne. The Princess Flavia of the Sapphire Spring. Oh, Rodolfo, with all my heart. <laughs> Just look at them. Bipsy, whipsy. <laughs> Aren't they the loveliest couple you ever saw? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a royal romance, all right. And it all started from a seashell, Red Lantern. Yeah. I guess we'll never pick one up on the beach back on Earth without remembering what happened today. Thanks to our sea nymph magic, Billy. Yes, yes our, our magic never fails. Just pour a tiny shell to your ear. Hark, to the magic whisper you hear. It sounds just as though the ocean were near. With the music of its thrill. Lucky seven time, Polly Wog. You know, I feel like a barker at the circus who says, Hurry, hurry, hurry. You only have two weeks left to get your entries in to this food saving contest. Now, last week I told you we were extending the contest. Because our United States Secretary of Agriculture, Clinton Anderson, said he wanted us to keep up our good work for the country by collecting more and more food-saving ideas. We want to get as many as we can. To make the getting of them more fun, we're offering... The most terrific prizes ever heard of in radio. The first prize is a barrel of money. That's right, a real honest-to-goodness barrel of money. Sure, I've seen it. It's full of nickels and dimes, quarters and dollars. And I've counted it. It has over $300 in it. And that's only the first prize. The second is a great big roll of greenbacks. And the third is a stack of nickels seven feet high. Gee whiz, you'd be rich if you won any one of them. <laughs> you'd be rich if you won the fourth prize. <laughs> and I'd like to win it because I'd get my own weight in pennies. <laughs> well, uh, how much do you weigh, Dan? Oh, about 175 pounds. <laughs> Now, uh, that means you'd get 175 pounds of pennies. Oh, boy, that would suit me fine. <laughs> it would suit anyone fine. And just think, any one of you listeners might win it. Everybody has a chance. And it doesn't make one particle of difference how many entries you've already sent in. You can send as many more as you like. Remember this, the very last one may be the big winner. And remember, too, there are 300 more prizes besides the ones we've been telling you about. 300 subscriptions, each for a whole year, to our brand new Land of the Lost comic magazine. Each magazine has three thrilling Land of the Lost stories in it. They're all in full color, too. You'll see what this wonderful kingdom at the bottom of the sea looks like. Watch Red Lantern riding in a taxi crab and see hundreds of other things you've never seen before. And these 300 subscriptions to the comic magazine, in addition to the other wonderful prizes we've told you about, the barrel of money and all the rest, give everybody a lot of chances to win. Isabel, tell them how easy it is to win. Well, it's easy because you can get help from any number of people. 
All you have to do is to ask anyone in your home or anyone else you know for an idea on how to save food. Then send that idea to us. Just write, you can save food by. Then tell us what doing by doing what. Now, suppose I just repeat those words to you slowly. You can save food by. Then tell us how. For example, uh, what does your family do to save fat or bread or any other food? We save food in our house by never throwing away any bread. Well, now, that was easy, wasn't it? You told just what you do in your house in a few words. That's just what we want all the rest of you to do. And we want to collect all these food-saving ideas for a very serious reason. Dan, uh, tell them why. Well, because the President of the United States has asked us all to do everything we can to save food. He says that if we share our food-saving ideas with each other, we'll actually be able to save enough to feed those starving people in Europe. And that's the reason our Secretary of Agriculture wrote us personally and said... All land of the lost listeners, keep up the good work you're doing with that excellent slogan, Gang Up on Garbage. I promised we would, and I want every one of you to help me. Every mother in every home will know a lot of food-saving ideas. Sure, and your mother will be only too glad to help you by telling you as many as she knows. Send them all in, no matter how simple they may seem to you. Send as many as you can, as quickly as you can. Each one costs you only a penny postcard, and any one of them may win you a barrel of money. And it's uh, really the simplest kind of things we want. Now, now, I do hope I've made it very plain just what you have to do to enter this contest. Send in an idea for saving food. Ask your mother, your grandmother, your aunt, or anybody you know to give them to you. Get all the neighbors to help you. Then write each food-saving idea you collect on a separate postcard and send it to us. No matter how many you have already sent, the more you keep sending, the more chances you have to win. But look, now this is important. Each food-saving idea must be on a separate postcard or in a separate letter. Send postcards if possible, and be sure to put your name and address on each entry. Now, I know that many of you have already mailed in one or more entries, but don't stop now. Continuing the contest gives you that much more of a chance. So send in as many more food-saving ideas as you can get as fast as you can. Of course, some of you may be sending in your first entry, but don't hesitate, because your chance is as good as anyone else's, because the very last one we receive may be the one that will win that barrel of money. Address your cards or letters to the Land of the Lost, Mutual Broadcasting System, Box 222, Times Square, Station, New York. Now, I'll repeat that address for you very slowly. The Land of the Lost, Mutual Broadcasting System, Box 222, Times Square, Station, New York. And uh, this is important. Get as many entries in as quickly as possible. Whole families can write in. The opinion of our judges is final, and all entries become the property of the program. Prizes will be awarded for the most useful food-saving ideas. Remember that address. It's Land of the Lost, Mutual Broadcasting System, Box 222, Times Square Station, New York. Once again, that's Land of the Lost, Mutual Broadcasting System, Box 222, Times Square Station, New York. Be sure to be with us next week when the Pollywogs find their old friend, Uncle Zeke Sponge, in pretty hot water, thanks to a finsome ladyfish the Widow Puffer. Tune in same time, same station when Isabel Manning Houston takes you again to the land of the lost. The Land of the Lost is an original story by Isabel Manning Houston. The director is Cyril Armbrister. Vocal arrangements, Peggy Marshall. Lyrics, Barbara Miller. Musical background, Jean Parazzo. This program was heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.